uh, Chitarandan, um, the, talk, talk to us a bit about your, your work in learning generally, learning styles, uh, the systems of learning. How well are today's education systems, training systems matched for where we're trying to get people to go, where they need to go in the economy in terms of skills and whether they're hard skills or soft skills or how they learn and how, 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 how well it's working and where it's not working. Just talk to us about that if you would. Thank you. Um, I think it would be interesting to start the answer to that question with uh, looking at the topic that we have here this, for this uh, particular session. Uh, we're asking what does it take to prepare our young for jobs. Um, I don't know, I'm sure many people in this room are familiar with, a, uh, with an annual Gallup study which measures employee engagement. Um, it's a pretty big study. It uh, involves something like 200,000 respondents. Um, it is done in about 142 countries. And it, uh, it, it, it involves something like 7,000, 4,000 or thereabout uh, employers. So it's a, it's a fairly good um, way of uh, looking at what people are doing with whatever that is, is that they're doing. And Gallup says margin of error is plus minus 3%. If Gallup says that, I'll take it. Right. Um, what does it say? For the last eight years, seven, eight years that I have followed that survey, the number of employees engaged with their work, with their jobs, has not been higher than 18%. Engaged employees number less than 18% in this very large sample of working populations of our, of our world. Um, the others, which is something like somewhere between 82 and 85%, are either not engaged, which means basically they don't care what happens with the stuff that they do, or are actively disengaged, which means they hate what happens with the stuff that they do. I don't know if it scares you, it scares me. 80 to 85 percent of people who are working today don't care about their work, don't care about their jobs. So if someone would ask me, what should we do to get our children ready for jobs? I'd say, do nothing. It's a problem. If we begin to prepare our children, and all of us are doing that, the education systems are doing that, and so on, not doing it very well, but still trying to do that, trying to get young people to be ready for the jobs that are available, we condemn them to a life of meaninglessness, to a life of frustration, to meaningless work that they find no uh, connection to. I think that's where we are at this time. And this has been done every year for the last seven or eight years. I'm sure it goes back much longer. I'm sure as we continue going into the future, we'll see something similar going on. What should we be preparing young people for? Right. So um, as I look at this, I see um, essentially two things that we should be doing first of all in this particular context. Yeah. I, I just want to talk about three key areas Please. and I'll get, get to that one by one. Uh, one is of course we would today like to talk to the people who create, design, manage and maintain these jobs to see if they could do something differently which would actually engage people, young people with, with the work that they do which would make it more meaningful for them. Um, we try to do that quite a lot in my work but I must admit that I'm not holding my breath for that to change at any time soon. Um, we've, we've gotten to a very strange place over the last 30 or 40 years where we seem to have forgotten a whole lot of stuff that we learned over the 20th century about how, what, what gets people interested, excited about their work and so on. And we've just, so that's one, uh, one area that we could do, but I don't know how effective it's going to be in the short run. 
In the long run, it seems to me that we could work with our education systems so that the people who are now children, when they become 40 years old, they create a world in which it's actually a joy to work. I think that would be interesting. I think that would be worth doing. And if I look at it like that, then I say, okay, what is worth learning for the children today? And how do we get there? Those are the two key questions that I, I would look at. And to me, it seems that when we think about what is worth learning today for, for young people, one of the first things that we immediately look at is, this is a period of dramatic and rapid change. It's discontinuous change all the time. Uh, we've seen business models going out of, uh, out of uh, contention in a decade or less. Uh, we've seen people not knowing what skills they should learn because they become useless by the time they've learned them and so on. So, I think, as I call this century, I call this century of shifting sands. Constantly shifting. It's a century of not knowing. We do not know what we should what skills specifically we should teach our children uh, so that they can be successful. I think in this um, scenario, it seems to me it's much easier to um, think about what kind of education they might have rather than what knowledge we should give them. Um, to me, it seems that today, given the rapid pace of change, etc., et on the one hand, and on the other hand, the dramatic epidemic of mental health challenges that our young are faced with, and it's across the world, it's, it's truly scary. Um, because there is no mooring, there are no anchors, there is a sense of drift, and so on and so forth. So these are two things that are happening in our world. Change is relentless, and there is nothing to hold on to. Where do you think if, if um, so I take your point about education systems being about educating versus disseminating knowledge is the way I hear it. If you're an employer, do they then, as employers, take up the specific skills <laughs> Skills to be trained against. So you, know, so you need skills as a as an employer, yeah. yeah. So, so here's what I what I look at. If I were to help a young person learn what he I think would be useful for an employer 20 years from now, which is when he is going to get into the workforce, or 15 years from now, or even 10 years from now, I really don't know what he should do. I don't know. Yeah. I am not sure what he should learn specifically by way of skills, and the entire effort to say we must pack skills into the children is really flying in the face of what we see every day. To me, it seems that what the only thing we can give our children today, uh, which makes sense for them, and I, I see it as, as, as something that has traditionally been seen as, um, as opposed to each other, they need to learn, this, learn a science. They need to learn a science of attention. They need to learn the science of presence. They need to learn the science of critical inquiry. We do not teach, we do not help children, young children learn that very much. And it's a science, it's a way of looking at our presence and our understanding of the world and so on and so forth. But at the same time, it seems to me that what is terribly important, and the Archbishop this morning referred to it, we also need our young children to learn the religion of togetherness and interdependence and, and, and connection. Both of those things, they, they, have been, they have been talked about for centuries, but never before it seems to me has there been a greater need to do both together. Um, it is not enough simply to learn skills by ourselves, uh, though, though that is very important, we have to look at understanding of critical inquiry and, and just being present to what is going on and what I can do to that. What is a skillful means of dealing with the shifting sands that I have here? Yeah. That's very important to learn. Yeah. But it's also important to figure out how I connect with my world, the world that's around me, and so on and so forth. And again, we do not do much of that, and the technology that we've had, the, the, the impact of technology has exacerbated that problem substantially. And we need to really go back and say, this needs to change.